I'm just excited that we're doing this because I came to Journey late. So I have not heard the stories about how Journey started and I'm dying to know. I wish we had been telling stories all along, but it's a kind of an important part of knowing where we're going is knowing where we've been. So I'm uh, hoping that, that you guys can tell us some, some of the background of what happened and how Journey got started. John, you want to go first? Oh, sure. I'd be glad to. I have so many early journey stories to share, but I'm, I'm just going to tell one that's most meaningful to me, and that's my very first visit to journey, which was July 18th, 2004. Wow. And so this, uh, this story actually started on the weekend of July 4th. So I'm sitting there at home on a Saturday reading a print newspaper. This is way before the times of digital print. So I'm reading the Austin American Statesman on a Saturday morning. And there in the city state section is a little, little two sentence paragraph buried in the middle of nowhere that for some miraculous reason I just happened to read. And it said, Rick Diamond starting a church meeting at the YMCA on McNeil. That's it. Two sentences. Um, Going to be a church. We know where it is. We don't know when or what date or anything. Um, I'm pretty excited about that. I run, Susan's taking a shower at that time. I run into the bathroom and say, Susan, Rick's starting a church. And she gets excited. We're both excited because we came to know Rick from our experience at a big mega church here uh, in Austin that Rick was part of. And then he left and we were bummed about that. And as it turns out, quite a few people were bummed about that. Um, and so there was the news, Rick was starting a church at the YMCA on McNeil. So Susan got out of the shower and ran to the phone and called the YMCA wanting to know tell me everything, tell me all about it so we'll know what to do. And the person on the other end of the phone says, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and so she talked to a couple of other people at the Y and nobody knew anything. So there we were bummed again, but she was persistent. And during the course of the next week, she continued to call the YMCA. And sometime during that ne next week, she actually talked to somebody who knew something and said, yea, verily, the church, Rick is starting a church here, and it's kicking off on the 18th. At, I can't remember if it was 11 or 9, whatever it was. We went, and we were really excited about it. So we drive over to the Y on Sunday the 18th, that we always celebrate the 18th of July uh, at Journey uh, as for our anniversary picnic and such. So we drive over there and we go into the Y and we ask where it is and they point us to this big exercise room down the yeah. hall. And we walk down to the exercise room. We go in, there's probably 200, literally, there's probably 200 people in there. Wow. Scurrying around, talking, total chaos. Um, there's chairs, there's about, there's a whole bunch of white plastic chairs set up. And then there's camp chairs. Somewhere in the process, it had been known by all to bring camp chairs. So we'll have enough chairs for everybody to sit in. But there were camp chairs all around and all these white plastic chairs. Renee was off in the corner with some uh, musicians trying to get things going. Um, total chaos. <laughs> I know nobody in that room. Oh nobody. my gosh, really? <laughs> nobody. I mean, I knew Rick, I didn't know him, we had met, and I'd said hello to him, and he'd said hello to me, but Susan and I had come to appreciate his teaching and preaching chops, and we're very impressed and thrilled that he was starting a church, but we're in there, and I know nobody. Aww. Well, I didn't last long, but at that time, it's very imposing to an introvert like myself. So I picked me out a camp chair on the back row, and there's <laughs> enough chairs in there that I can hide pretty good. So I'm on the back row, 
And that's where I'm going to tell you what happened, which is phenomenal. I sit down in my camp chair and I just sit. And then I'm covered with this heaviness that just sinks me into the chair, totally relaxes me in this non-introverted environment. Mm. And then I feel, I mean, the message that I'm getting is I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Um, wow. And it wasn't my imagination. It was palpable. It was real. I can still feel it. And to this day, I think that's, um, I think that's the most godlike spiritual event that I've ever experienced. It was very, very, very real. And so I knew where I was and I knew where I was supposed to be. And I knew I would be a journeyer and I've been a journeyer ever since. And I'm very grateful about that. The fascinating thing to me is, because I talk to a lot of journeyers and over the 17 years, I talk to journeyers and say, well, what do you think of journey, particularly new journeyers? And I hear it over and over and over again. Well, it's interesting, John. I just could feel the spirit of community the first time I went to journey. And I know what they're talking about. So I'm a journeyer. I'm thrilled that I was exposed to that opportunity. It's been um, a transformational experience for me. That's my first visit to Journey Story. Wow, that I can't it's tell awesome. you that me. It really does just mm -hmm. hearten me to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Julie, I think you were pretty close to the beginning, if not the beginning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I was, um, I, I went to his Sunday schools uh, in at Riverbend. And, um, and then when all that blew up, um, I talked to Matt McKinley and I said, what's going on? What, what's happening here? And he told me, and I, so I had emailed Rick and I said, you know, uh, I heard that you're thinking about starting something. And, uh, wow. I said, please let me know because we're there. And, um, um, let's see, I had gotten, I got Zoe in, uh, April of 2004. And so Zoe is your uh, daughter. She's, <laughs> she's 17 she'll be 18 in November wow so yeah that's how I can keep up with how long we've been at journey <laughs> um how funny. so anyway so um I found out that it was going to be at the YMCA so we, Zoe and I went and you know she's still in her little carrier <clears throat> and I think there were probably maybe six families there at the most. Um, and I remember the one, the first thing <clears throat> that he did is he called all the kids up, which, you know, at, at this mega church, they didn't do that, you know? Um, and so, you know, I walked up there with Zoe and sat on the floor and, um, he started taught and his son was there and he said, you see this, you see this guy over here? Now, this is my son, da, 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 da. And he said, uh, and then he had pictures of him when he was little and he was talking about change and, you know, and, and um, <clears throat> he said, you know, things change and, you know, they can change for the bad, they can change for the good. And, you know, this, I would never have recognized him from when he was a baby. And anyway, he went on and on. And, and uh, of course he was also talking about our change and, uh, going from this mega church to this. And I mean, I think probably half of us were in tears, you know, it was just like, yeah, it's, it's been, it, it's, it's been, um, troubling at best. And, um, so we were, we all felt like this is where we should be. This is, 
this is great. It's a, it's a start of something new and uh, a lot of electricity, I think, in the, in the air there and, uh, and some sadness on as to what had happened before. And um, so, but it was, it was just like, he was telling the kids, you know, things change over time and, you know, they can change for the good. And this is one of the things that we're starting and it's going to be for the good. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was incredible. It still gives me chills when I think about it, uh, that that little sermon he had with the with the kids. It was just incredible. Mm-hmm. I remember yeah. that first sermon after the kids, and it was built on the premise of how are you going to feel the first time I disappoint you. That was the, oh. that was the theme of the sermon. Oh wow! I'm going to disappoint you. Let me let's talk about that. So I thought <laughs> well, that's kind of an unusual way to kick <laughs> off a church. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Now, Alan, yeah, it was incredible. Alan and Deanne, were you all here at at that time? I was at the Y, but I hadn't even met Alan yet. And um, uh, we read a news. Well, Tess, my daughter Altessa saw in a newspaper article about the church. So maybe that's after it had been going for a month or something like that. And she wanted to go there. She had gone to Riverbend with me. I We had only started going to church maybe for three months because I was newly sober and they encouraged me to go to church. And so I went to, the, we had our meetings at Riverbend. So I went to the Riverbend church. And I liked the other pastor because I was brand new sober and I needed things simple. And Gerald would give you one, two, three points. And, and it was very easy. <laughs> <Good to learn>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and Rick to me, it's like, this is too complicated for me. Uh, but Altessa really liked Rick. And so then we went, when he was at the Y, we went over there and I liked it more because at Riverbend, when you walked in, you didn't talk to anybody. It was like a lot of churches. You just walk in quietly mm-hmm. and you sit down. And at the Y, it was very friendly. Um, it was very child-friendly. It was just welcoming and you got to know people. And mm-hmm. I did especially like that he made a point about with the babies. He said, nobody wants you to leave if your baby's crying. If you're you know, and the babies could crawl around the room and the kids could run around the room. I, I just liked how family loving it was. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about putting on a show. Um, and uh, so that's how I ended up at the Y. Cool. <laughs> cool. And that's what Rick used to say at Sunday school. Um, he would when when we were at the other church at, at Riverbend, he would say, "Okay, time for the show," you know, uh, after after the Sunday school thing was over and it was time to go to the thing. And if he had to dress up for the for the show, um, that's what he would say when he was preaching instead of Gerald. So yeah, it was kind of funny. Mm. So yeah, he was. Uh, I, I remember the first time he kind of he was looking around and you know totally disorganized and um he he found a couple of bibles and he kind of tossed them and i heard this gasp from some people (laughs) and they were like he was like y'all it's a book it's a book you know and it was so funny because all of those things just i i still think of when uh you know when i'm there it's like oh my god you're so irreverent i love it you know (laughs) so was it like a culture shock? Did it feel like a different culture? Oh, With yeah. Rick? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's like there are, there's, you know, there's the list of official rules for, for established corporate church structures. Yeah. Well, you just shred those, <laughs> Rick. And that was what was most attractive to me. Yeah. Did yeah. you have did you have Sunday school at when you were starting out? Soon after, I don't know if it was the first Sunday, but almost immediately there was uh, 
a Rick Bible study followed by a Rick worship service. And I always, uh, myself and many, many, many others were partial to the Bible study because it was, believe it or not, even more informal than a Rick's <laughs> preaching style. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, interactive, a lot of dialogue, a lot of uh, examples. You know, I need four volunteers. Who's going to be Jesus? And then who's going to be blah, blah, oh, yeah, blah. And, yeah, yeah. And, and then he would, he, he would always structure teaching examples around role playing. And uh, mm -hmm. so that was unique. So that was very unique. And, uh, and so he did Bible study for probably 15 of the 17 years. And then it kind of faded away. It had run its course. Uh, but that was my draw was the, the journey was the dialogue from Bible study. Yeah, that, uh, you know, I wasn't here at the beginning, but, but that definitely, you know, is the space where I live. I like the dialogue. I like talking yeah. about it a whole yeah. lot more, you know, yeah. and um, enjoyed very much over these years, um, his, what he brings to the story. Yeah. You know, I always took notes. I had to go up to him once and say, Rick, I'm, I'm in the back on my phone, but I'm not on my phone. I'm taking notes. That's what I'm doing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I know it looks like I'm taking, so you know, the, taking notes, but I'm, I mean, I'm, that I'm not paying attention. Yeah. I, the reason I keep reaching down and pulling my phone out <laughs> is because you say things I want to remember, you know, That's funny. and that that's probably years of being indoctrinated in a church. I'm doing something wrong. I'm going to get. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. I don't have my head. So the Vickers have been part whatever. of this experiment for 17 years and they were there at the Y. And I don't know if you've ever noticed Pat, but she's taken notes. So she has notes for ev practically every sermon wow. he's done in 17 years. Wow. So Gail, when did you start coming? I, I started coming when I was in seminary. Um, Rick and Vicki showed up to seminary um, to recruit an intern uh, because the <laughs> seminary has a, an internship program where um, they'll send an intern for the summer months full time, or you can have an intern during the school year part time. And uh, this was, I think, the very first year they, that Journey had answered that call and considered doing this. And Rick and Vicki showed up in, that would have been in early 2017, I think, late 2016, something like that, showed up looking for an, a summer intern for 2017. And, um, and I was, you know going to need to be doing an internship and they showed up with a piece of paper one piece of paper that that was like a little graphic of what journey believes you know mm -hmm. and and I remember where I remember where I was sitting in the room um they had several preachers from the area coming in to do a presentation to my class the class of students who would be doing internships so that we would you know know where we wanted to apply and that and they would do three or four of these little lunch things and we would meet six eight nine pastors and then we would you know submit our applications wherever we wanted to to intern and I was so impressed with just what was on that paper I probably still have that somewhere um, because it was so direct and so simple and, and, it, mm -hmm. and Rick, of course, is very laid back and he's got a lot of charisma and I'm afraid he really, you know, showed up the other pastors that came, but <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of embarrassed for them. But then of course, Rick gets going and he gets excited and he let an expletive drop and <laughs> the lady in front of me, the seminarian in front of me goes, <gasps> <laughs> 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 yeah. It's like, How oh funny. yeah, that's my church right there. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and at the time I was um I had been going to a, a Presbyterian church mm -hmm. in my neighborhood, which I absolutely loved. 
but I was far enough into seminary to realize that I, the Methodists were never going to want me and uh, <laughs> that that the Presbyterians, you know, were never going to want me and that there were big theological issues I was going to run into long term. I mean, when you go to church, you don't have to believe everything that that denomination right. believes. You Most people don't even know what that denomination believes, you know, that they're going to that church, right? right? Um, yeah. But if you're going to be a pastor in that church, you mm -hmm. have to believe every single bit of it and i knew enough about um, it. I, I was i was like no i'm I, there are things deep buried in this theology that i cannot mm -hmm, sign mm -hmm. on to so i was looking for a church and i was looking for a um flatter structure and that was the just just hearing rick for i'm talking literally 10 minutes you know and i was like oh yeah i'm texting my husband we're we're leaving you know this church and we're going to go join this other church this week you know oh how funny <laughs> yeah and yeah. i never never looked back you know i still have um french deep friendships from that other church as mm -hmm. you know you all probably do too i just every church i've ever been to is another layer in my life you know, it's part of the sediment of who I am, right? Yeah, I always tell people that um, that Rick's way of teaching is it's almost like a history lesson, you know, because you know he he get the he'd get the, uh, the white paper out and he'd go, okay, so over here is Jerusalem and over here is da 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 and, you know, and it, he makes it so um, real almost, you know, it's just, it, it's like, it's, it's palpable. You can, you can see it. And instead of this just being kind of a mystical kind of a, a thing, you know, it, it, it's kind of like, okay, so over here is this and over here is this. And he was, uh, he was here and, you know, um, and it, and it, I always thought that was really interesting. And then of course the, the, the interaction, you know, with everybody, you know, um, while he's speaking, you know, at, at regular church, you don't do that. You don't interrupt the, the preacher, you know? Um, and, and so that's what I would always tell people is that this is not like any church you will ever, you will ever know, you know? And, and I said, so don't, you know, you don't have to get all dressed up. You don't have to do this. You can ask questions. And then I've got a niece who says, you know, what if I just don't believe it? And I said, perfect. Tell him. Yeah, you're in. Goes, no, I would never do that. <laughs> you know, and I said, well, a lot of people have. So, you know, there you go. Was there an Julie? organization at the beginning? Oh, sorry. Somebody, Natalie, what were it's, you saying? Yeah, I, I I unmuted myself, and I think that probably makes road noise. So I'll try to go back. No, to we, mute we're quickly. fine. We can't hear the road noise. We only. Yeah, oh, really? Good. Yeah. Oh, uh -uh. good. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say uh, I loved hearing your story, Julie, oh. and every part of it. And um, and I, one of the things that we're trying to do right now uh, on this Oasis team is to. Uh, try to determine what things that were done from the beginning we still want to keep we still want that to happen going forward and yeah. I love that you brought up the having the children come forward for as part of the the part of the service and yeah. that yes and I wanted to just say that for me bringing my uh, grandchildren who are Jewish um, you know to the church mm -hmm. when they were um, three and seven and they're now 12 and nine you know but um, just having they also were they just were so curious and intrigued mm -hmm. in the idea of being there and uh, and being paid attention to and talked yeah. with not yeah. yeah so I just wanted to make note of that Gail for our ongoing thing that that way of welcoming children into the worship service is something I think we have not talked about before so anyway yeah. I'm going to mute myself but I'm loving 
hearing everything y'all are saying <laughs> and hearing your story, DM, when you first came to and, and each one of you and John, I'd never heard that beginning story before, but you wow, I've you felt the weight, times. you felt the weight of the spirit yep. on you. Love that. That's hard for left brainers. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Okay, I got one more quick YMCA story. Oh, good. So I go to the Y first time, walk in. There's all these chairs in there, but most of them are camp chairs that people were asked to bring, which was awesome. But in a, among all of the camp chairs was 100, count them 100, cheap white plastic chairs. And I thought, well, that's neat. Um, so after the service, there's this big man there and he starts stacking all these white chairs and I start helping him stack the white chairs, my first journey service. Um, and you're still stacking <laughs> chairs. <laughs> yeah, I'm still stacking <laughs> chairs. So I'm helping this guy st stack the chairs and then he says, will you help me take them out to my truck? Oh. And I say, <laughs> well, okay. And so we and a couple other people were hauling a hundred white chairs out the YMCA and we put them in his truck. And he says, and he tells me he's gonna take them home. <laughs> we lost John. And then there's a commercial. <laughs> and oh now gosh. for a word from your sponsor. <laughs> so this big guy is gonna take them home. And I said, well, that, that's kind of odd. And he says, well, why, why are you taking them home? I said, well, we have no place to store them here. We just have that one little closet over there and that won't hold all these chairs. So I'll just take them home. And so I get to talking to him. This guy turns out is Norm Montgomery. Yeah. He's a big tough <laughs> guy. Him. And he talks like a farmer from South Texas. Love <laughs> that guy and his wife, Dinah. Yeah. And uh, so we get to talking and he tells me, yeah, I own all these chairs. And I said, well, well really, what, why? How did you come to have a hundred white plastic chairs? What brought that on? He said, well, I really didn't need them. I got plenty of old chairs at home in my garage. Well, what'd you buy a hundred white plastic <laughs> chairs for? And Norm says in the way that Norm talks, well, I just thought I might need them. <laughs> Me. And so for the next, I don't know, we were in the Y for two and a half years. Yeah. Every Sunday, Norm shows up in his Honda pickup truck with a hundred white chairs at <laughs> yeah. the back. And we take them out of the truck, put them in the room. At the end of the day, we take them out of the room, put them in the truck, and then go <laughs> yep. to yep. this house out on Lake Travis. And that is a God moment that wow. persuaded Norm Montgomery that he needed to buy a hundred <laughs> white plastic chairs when he right? had no need for them. Wow. He, knew any, he had bought them just a few months before Journey kicked off. Oh, wow. He wasn't quite wow. sure himself why he bought a hundred white plastic chairs, wow. but he figured it out. <laughs> wow. I have a question. Did, um, when y'all were still at the Y, was that when the getting baptized in the swimming pool at Norm and Dinah's house started? Yeah, that, uh, yes, I think the, the first baptism was a swimming pool at the Y, and then there were oh. baptisms at the river at Norm uh -huh. and Dinah's house. Yep, they did. On the they boat did dock. a baptism at the swimming pool at the Y. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Who, who knows about that? Who was that? I think, I'm not sure. I think I have some pictures of it. I know we did baptisms in a swimming pool for um, Julie. Potts, maybe? Which, no, not Julie Potts. Um, this Julie? Zoe's not me. mom? No. No? No. I'll think, of, I'll think of her name, but anyway. Okay. Anyway, we have done... Um, Swimming pool bad baptisms, <laughs> Lake Austin baptisms, yep. sprinkle baptisms, uh, um, slip and slide baptisms, <laughs> water hose sprinkle baptisms. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Uh, I know 
Margaret has a great store of photos and she yeah. says she's going to do some slideshows for us from <laughs> some of those long memories so yeah. wow thank you yeah she said she said that you know the the word used to be that they had to put everything in the closet at the y every week and so every week journey would come out of the closet right. yes oh. that's right <laughs> that was our logo the church that, that was comes it. out of the closet right and do you remember uh john when they we were trying to figure out a name for no journey? i don't oh it was funny Talk because he was that. Yeah, he, I just remember uh, that he had asked for, you know, input and everything. And he said, the one that, that keeps coming up is Journey. And then and, and all of a sudden he goes in, like the band, man? And he goes, yeah, kind of like the band, yeah. And <laughs> I remember that. I just remember that. I thought, Journey, well, that's interesting. Journey Church or Journey, you know, what, what are we going to be called? And he, we didn't want, we didn't want church in there so that's that's how we came up with the thing i don't know how we came up with the imperfect faith community but it's it fits you know well, it so sure sounds like we thought of journey faith community and then somebody later comes along and says well we need to stick imperfect in there yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just <laughs> Our 501c3 papers say journey faith community still. oh really yeah oh okay it was journey faith community first originally oh interesting i wonder what the story is but behind adding the imperfect because that's clearly a big deal yeah uh, i yeah. think currently uh, distinctive uh, yeah and susan pointed this out in some of her commentary in the journal and that is a lot of the early journey ethos of course came from rick but i think even more of it came from leslie diamond at that time. yes she was uh, extremely um, involved in the, mm -hmm. form, the formation and the belief system around that and the openness and yeah so as Susan pointed out in her comment we, we should remember that and it's true she she took a huge role yeah uh, in, and I would it wouldn't surprise me if that's where the word imperfect came from yeah <laughs> Do you remember the story uh, of just a few years ago when they were doing the uh, the gay parade? Yeah. And uh, and when when Rick arrived, Rick and Margaret arrived to pick up their packet of information, uh, it was gone. And someone there pointed out the woman that they had handed it over to. And she was from another one of the churches that's called Journey oh, in town. Yeah. And she was, and she had marked, she had looked at it, Journey Imperfect Faith Community, and she had marked a line through imperfect and she was angry oh! and she said that she thought that because really? she she was gay and some of them were gay that somebody oh. had called them an imperfect faith community oh wow oh. I, I remember that, that story too i was thinking the exact same thing it's like they thought it was vandalism but it's like no yes. we, we named ourselves that yes. <laughs> oh, <honey. laughs> Those yeah, are the wonderful stories that come up, you know, just that have come up just in the past 10 years since I've been there. It's just amazing. <laughs> it feels like it's been about seven years, but uh, it's just always such a joy to hear people talk about what their actual real life experiences are, mm -hmm. even just because we belong to a church that is as radically different, right. you know. I love to tell people in 12-step programs to invite them to, to come to Journey because, you know, it is, I always just say, I belong to this radical little community. <laughs> if you're interested, you know, in a church, it's unlike anything else um, that I've ever been part of. And I've been part of some really good, relatively traditional churches, but this one is unlike any other this is a memory of mine, but I mean, I didn't start till the warehouse. And <laughs> I always think my path was a little bit different. I had gone to a tr traditional um, Lutheran church all my life, small town. And a few years before I decided I need to join a new church. And I actually joined a different Lutheran 
So I was, I was in the, in my left brain here, like John talks about, and it was like, okay, they were even more conservative. They were the branch of Lutherans that don't have women in any leadership roles oh. and are real conservative. But whenever I went there, I said to myself, I remember driving on a road on the street saying, is there love here? And that was good enough for me because somebody had met me, talked with me that had never happened in, in a church before. And I got to know through a small group. When I came to Journey, it was just because Deanne was going there. And I had kind of been had some spiritual moments in my life. I almost died from surgery and, and mm-hmm. stuff. So I was like really open to find the core of love like that. But I was still in my left brain. And mm-hmm. I remember it's like, what is the creed for this? Is it is it the Nicene Creed or the other <laughs> oh creed God. and the literal wordings? Because I want <laughs> I don't want to latch on to a church that doesn't have an understandable creed. And this almost sounds like a Unitarian church. It doesn't even believe anything. <laughs> that is so, hilarious. I would love to have been a fly on the wall when you asked somebody that. <laughs> well, I did. And, and they at the end of service, they had a little orientation. Rick and a couple people say, if you want to find out about Journey, here's how you find out about Journey. And so I attended this thinking it's a structured, they have answers <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. And then it's like, no, we don't really have a creed. The closest thing is love God, love your neighbor. Yeah. And so I was like, I can latch onto that creed. Yeah. I don't need a Nicene creed about triune gods and da, 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 da. I had, I had been cracked open enough to say, that's not what God is about. And so it's like, but it was like, yes, I, w- I came in with a, how does this square peg fit into my round hole or vice versa of what I think of a church is. <laughs> right, and, then, right. and, and I, I kind of blew off the, a lot of churches, modern churches have cool music or dress codes that don't matter. And so it's like, that to me is cosmetic, but it was like at the core, it was that plus, I think Susan might've been part of that banner that was like, uh, help me, help me, help me. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. Amen, amen, amen. What is your <laughs> creed? What is your core values? Yeah. And so that was what where I left brain concentrated to like, oh, they don't have a creed. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I love that. I yeah. do too. <laughs> I love that. Did you did you have music um, starting out? What was was yes. there music? What was yeah, that? Like? Renee was a uh, music person, but there were lots of musicians who uh, joined her, um, and there was live music every every Sunday. To me, that was a great thing. Not a yeah. warehouse, but later is like. Seems like uh, Dave Gentiles had all these connections. So it's almost like you might be attending a show on 6th Street every day. There'd be a new band (laughs) playing cool music, not just Christian rock songs. Right. And a lot of that came from Judy Sawyer, who you Mm -hmm. may remember, Gail, because she was was on exposition for a year, not exposition, but on uh, at our current location on Woodrow for about a year before she she um, moved to South to North Carolina but anyway she was really involved in the music scene and had lots of connections and she knew tons of artists and between her and Renee there was somebody new and different at playing a journey every week. Wow did y'all sing did the uh, you know one of the things (laughs) that I actually have missed in being at journey is what group singing I missed that. Yeah. We did. We sang, and uh, yeah. But you, did John, you sing congregational hymns, John? Um, I don't know that we ever really sang a hymn. I mean, right. Renee's yeah, been there since the beginning, so she's written right. a few uh, <laughs> original songs surrounding Journey, and we've sung right. those. Yeah. And well, and, and what I've way we also. Go ahead. We sang, we sang uh, "Amazing Grace" to uh, "Peaceful Easy Feeling." Remember? Yeah, Aww. remember that. So that was kind of cool. Haven't done that. Uh, wow. And then the Sherpas. Remember the Sherpas? Yes, I have they photos awesome. of the Sherpas. Oh, yes. They were so good. Were they a, gr- a singing them. group? Is that what they were? That was actually three independent artists. Yeah. 
um, and they came together collectively through Judy Sawyer, uh, and they oh. played for Journey a couple times, two uh, or three times. They were great. Yeah. Oh, I know. And Dave Madden was also, mm -hmm. you probably don't know Dave, yeah. um, but he was an early musician and he actually worked with Renee for, I don't know, he was part of Journey yeah. for probably eight years, I'd say. Yeah, uh, he was still he, there when I came. Yeah. Uh, and he's a real a pro, so I bet as he, we yeah, all know. I was there. Yeah. Well, yeah. we certainly had some very impressive musicians, just even in the short time that I've been here. Um, was David Gentiles there at the beginning? No, but soon after. Oh, yeah. yeah so we started yeah. in July, and it was probably about a year uh, when Rick invited him to come be associate pastor at Journey. So he was there with us at the where at the Y probably another year and a half before we moved to the warehouse. And then we lost him in 2009 yeah. due to an accident. That was He was uh, good at rounding people up. He could get <laughs> he could get people like if we were going to do an event or yeah. uh, you know uh, some work uh, he could get 20 people to show up. Yeah. Really easy. Wow. Yeah, he was a great guy. Natalie, I thought I heard you making a comment. Did you? Um, I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh man. I think so, it was just about the music that this is one of the comments that has been spoken a few mm -hmm. times when we since Rick's retirement in knowing that things. Uh, you know, that there will be some changes. Several people have said, I've missed congregational singing. Yeah. And I'm hoping that we'll have more of that in the future. Yeah. And I have been there for 10 years. And during those 10 years, there's, it's almost kind of a joke every Christmas that we're going to do at least one or two Christmas <laughs> hymns. And, you know, that, uh, so that it's really true that, um, we don't fit into either of the church experiences that I've had in the past, either the ones where they have sung all the traditional old Baptist hymns, nor the ones that where they're now doing all of the, you know, much, much more modern uh, mm -hmm. Christian music. Anyway, I do think that music is such a powerful mover mm -hmm. and motivator and I love the way that uh, all different kinds of music is been has been used at Journey mm -hmm. it just isn't always something that the congregation knows and can sing along with right the Did community I should say do you all remember any like organizational meetings was there something going on behind the scene besides the Sunday worship like how did Journey coalesce as a church in the beginning yeah, yeah. i'd like to hear that too julie and alan do y'all know <laughs> and yeah well, I, I wasn't there but i know there you know the early movers were jim cannon and mike lawrence and a couple of other families yeah, yeah. and and woody um we, we had no shortage of lawyers in the original sampling of <laughs> yeah, yeah, But anyway, true. the biggest that's organizational true. endeavor, and tech, no, the Zims weren't in that. The biggest organizational uh, work output was actually writing our um, um, bylaws. The bylaws. If mm -hmm. you've ever seen those bylaws, they I've are extensive. And they speak to the ethos of journey. They're just not about structure, although that's in there. But it's it's they speak more to the belief system around journey and the importance of community and yeah. and heart, mind, soul, and strength and bones and that kind of stuff. That's oh, really oh, so, so were were heart, mind, soul, strength, and bones were they part of it at the very beginning? Yeah, pretty soon after formation, yeah. that bones came about six or eight years later. Yeah. But it was heart, mind, soul, oh. strength was the original ethos of journey, and the bylaws right. were written around. I that. love that so much. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. I still, and it's still uh, the 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 official 
way we do business, Nathalie, the, the triad <laughs> yeah. we're currently under is, is still in experimental stage, but it's really yeah. never gotten a fair shake because we've been in pandemic for a year. Yeah. And we I see just say you mentioned Woody. Was he here at the beginning and Woody? I was yes. trying to think of uh, yeah. institutional memories that yeah. would he remember some of those bylaw <clears throat> processes? He probably would. Yeah, I absolutely. Was, yeah, I, I had I had not drunk the Kool Aid enough to be involved in every aspect of Journey at that time. Now, he and uh, he and Dinah, yes, and um, Norm were related, and I think that's I, I am not even sure how. Oh yeah, Woody, Norm and Dinah were. family related. Yeah, Woody's, Woody was Woody's married. Wife Woody know that? Is, Woody's wife at the time is Diana's sister. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I did not know that. And then they, they divorced uh, not long after Journey started. Some right. you know, in two or three or four years. Yeah. Yeah. We were still at we were still at uh, the Y when that oh, happened. Oh, we were. I think. I think so. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll have to yeah. put Woody for some stories. Yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Drag him in here and got him to talk and tell us some stories. These stories have been soul feeding. I <laughs> love hearing this. I, thank you so much for showing up and telling these stories. And we're going to keep doing it. So keep watching the newsletter and keep joining in because I mean, this is just really who we are. And I love it. And I love all of y'all. Hey, Gail. Yes, could you give thank you. Gail, could you give me the screen for 30 seconds? I have Absolutely. one. Absolutely. I, I have one photo I would like to share. Can yeah. you see that? Oh yeah. my gosh. So yeah. that's that's at the YMCA. You'll notice uh, Rick's in uh, in his normal garb. Like the Gentiles and Rick at the Y. Yes, oh, yeah. and he's sitting, he's sitting in a camp chair. Wow. Oh, what a that yeah, handsome David. gentleman next wow. to him is David Gentiles. Yeah. And no gray and Rick's this is, beard this is, or hair. Yeah. <laughs> this is my favorite journey picture of all time because there's so much energy in that photo. Mm -hmm. oh. And fun and joy. Oh, I love that. That's a great picture. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, John. <laughs> um, can you hear me with my mute off? Okay. Uh, my first impression, I, like you, went, uh, you know, on hopefully trying to expand the recovery experience and um, not being, being gone to a, quite a few churches, never enjoying any of them, just kind of tolerating, waiting for the free bagels at the end of the, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. There you go. A walk after I, my own uh, heart. <laughs> yeah. I had, you know, Nathalie and I were already friends for quite some time, and I had an awkward experience with her that actually um, helped me say yes to going to Journey. She and I were talking about something really heavy, and she said, uh, can I pray with you right now? And I went, no, <laughs> I am not, I am, ugh, I don't do that. You know, I mean, it was like she had gotten naked in the car or something, <laughs> and she just smiled and I smiled and we laughed at both. I, I forget exactly how we processed all of it. It was four years ago. And after that, for a few days, I thought, this is someone I can trust. She didn't turn her back on me. She didn't act better or worse than me after I said that. So whatever this place is that she goes, I should give it a try. And when she brought me in, I recognized faces and then the whole handing babies around, that happened a couple of times. I love that. Like, oh, it's a baby. Do you get this every time you come? <laughs> it's like, it was like a service baby, you know? Because <laughs> I was anxious, you know? And then a, a huge memory is John always coming up and giving me a hug. Like uh, right when I would walk in before I could feel self-conscious that nobody's talking to me. What should I do? Should I go in the kitchen? What should I do? Maybe I should clean. John would come up and give me a big head, you know, hug and I would forget. <laughs> I'd get out of myself. And that was always really helpful. Um, and yeah, a lot of it was just things like that. And it was wonderful. And Sheffield. Uh, oh, and bringing Sheffield and how much people just let him come in and out of the aisles and 
you know, he was, they just pet him and pat him and he'd lay down and just listen and wag. (laughs) (laughs) So, and all of you have been so welcoming and I can't, I, you know, I said in the beginning of this Zoom call, um, you know, I just got fitted for dental work yesterday and I've been waiting for years to do that. And it's just, I still can't believe that that huge gift was given to me, you know, on top of the other assistants, it's like that it really, you know, I've told a lot of people about that, that really um, has humbled me and helped me realize I know very little about what's really out there and what's out there is incredibly appealing and welcoming. So I really do appreciate you guys. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. Your story. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, yeah. Deanne, for yeah. bringing that out. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Deanne. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. Love you, okay. Have a good day. Thanks, Gail. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>